Today I want to talk to you guys about the bathroom situation in China. We're gonna get real. It's gonna get real TMI. So if you're not prepared for the TMI that's about to come, which includes some pictures that I found online that are very accurate in representing the things I saw in China, then you probably shouldn't watch this video because this is for people who want to know the cold hard truth about using bathrooms in China. So the reason I wanted to make this video is because before I went to China, I was terrified of the squatty potties, the infamous squatting toilets in Asia that everyone was talking about. I had never been to Asia before, so I didn't really know what to expect exactly other than it's gonna be a hole in the ground. And I wanna make this video to make you guys feel more comfortable because the scariest thing is the unknown. And once I tell you about this, you'll know all about bathrooms in China and then you'll be prepared and you can move on from that fear and just go have fun in China. Speaking of being afraid of the unknown, not knowing what to pack for China was a huge problem for me so I've included a link down below to my ultimate female packing list for a year in China and you can definitely tweak this for like a week-long trip to China but it's full of awesome advice that I kind of fine-tuned over a long period of time back to the scheduled content so one thing about Chinese bathrooms that I really really appreciate is that they're everywhere even in the neighborhoods they're hi buddy <laughs> my dog's out here with me hey man even in like the neighborhoods, like back in suburbs, there's public restrooms just randomly on the street, in the alleyways. What? <laughs> How is that possible? It's like a city, it's a city funded thing or something. Here in the US, we don't do that. If you are in a suburb and for some reason you need a bathroom, you either need to find a public park or a business. You're not gonna find a bathroom just randomly in the suburbs. And even of a lot of American cities, especially San Francisco. San Francisco is the worst about public bathrooms. So I was shocked to find so many options in China. It was really awesome. Now, the state of these bathrooms can vary drastically depending on where you are. If you are in the hutongs in Beijing, for example, and you're just strolling along exploring and you need to use the bathroom and you go in one of those public toilets right there, there's some different things you may run across. One of the really normal setups that I have found in a lot of touristy areas um, in the Hutong areas in Beijing was a series of stalls. So, you know, your typical bathroom stalls. And for some reason there was raised up. I don't really know why. And the majority of the stalls were the squatting toilets, usually just one of the Western sitting toilets. And these are actually, I believe, intended to be used by like the elderly, like people that they are worried about falling. I think that's why they provide those, but they're also like recommended for foreigners too. There's usually a cleaning person nearby. If it's a super busy bathroom, they're probably hanging out in the bathroom most of the day. And I found whenever I was in a tourist area, this happened to me at the Forbidden City. I remember I walked into one of these public toilets and there's a huge row of like stalls for squatting toilets, which at that point I was totally fine using. There was one Western toilet and the cleaning lady literally like motioned for me to follow her and opened up the door to the western toilet and like presented it to me i was like thank you <laughs> Well, so that happens but most of the time I, if i was using a public restroom i was squatting i got really good at it the first time i went number two you know did a little poo in the squatty toilet i texted eric because i was so proud of myself it was a big accomplishment for me oh you want to play i see you say hello fearless fam subscribe okay i'm just gonna be playing with my dog while this happens so the majority of the time whew, it's windy when i first got to china i was noticing that when i used public bathrooms including ones like at restaurants and bars it was mostly squatting toilets and i'll show you a picture right here of what a squatting toilet looks like so you're not freaked out it's not just like a little dirt hole in the ground or anything it's like a ceramic situation with obvious places to put your feet it takes a little getting used to so you don't pee on yourself but to be honest there's no way to like learn it other than just doing it start practicing your squats and you'll get used to it i promise another thing to keep in mind is that when you're using public restrooms in china you're gonna want to carry around a pack of tissues with you because you're gonna have to use these as toilet paper at some point or another there isn't toilet paper in every stall in most public toilets. It's outside of the bathroom. So before you walk in, it should be on the wall and there's just one dispenser. You take what you need before you go in. To be honest, I didn't even know that at first. I was just like, there's no toilet paper. So I just brought my own tissues and used those like everywhere I went. So sometimes there would be a bunch of stalls that were all squatting toilets. Sometimes it'd be mostly squatting toilets. 
Then I started coming across some bathrooms I had never seen before. So the first very unique bathroom I came across was one in Nanjing. And I was drinking and eventually I had to go to the bathroom and I had never used that public bathroom before and it's like late at night. So Eric had used the men's one quite a few times and he kind of warned me, he's like, these ones are a little more like, you know, so good luck. I go in there and it was basically a trough. I think it was cement. It was like a cement floor. And then there was like just an area cut out of the ground. And then there were like these short little walls that might as well just not have been there. And the whole idea, because there was someone else using the bathroom at the time, and so everybody can see everybody else's business in this place, which I was not used to, but I had to get over it very quickly. So I was very thankful to have several beers in me already at that point. Basically what you do is you put a foot on either side of that trough. So you're kind of like, your shoulder is like facing the wall that all of this is against. I don't know, the trough is here and your foot is on either side and you squat over that. And then it's like slanted so everything like runs back into this area. But there is a cleaning person who has to come in and like, I'm sorry, but they have to like hose everything down because some things don't run as easily as others. So when I got in there, it was late at night, which is the most disgusting time to use a public bathroom in China. There was lots of um, feces just there to look at. And when I walked in, there was a rat hanging out with the feces and it looked straight at me and I just about shit myself, although I guess that would have been okay. Shockingly, I did have to pee enough to go ahead and use the bathroom anyways. When I made eye contact with the rat, he ran away and I was able to do my business and leave as soon as possible. So that was my first taste of what was to come later on. So we were out in a village on this like island and the bathroom in the hotel that we were staying in was rural. It was really dirty like this raised platform that you'd actually use for the toilet and then it was a squatting toilet so in a hotel room that's pretty unusual from what I've discovered as a foreigner you're restricted to certain hotels and all out of my experience all those hotels inside your hotel room have Western style toilets and some of them were even like smart toilets with like a bajillion buttons on them and we'll get to those in a second then later on when we went to Beijing to go visit Beijing we were walking around the hutongs going to different breweries and we ended up at slow boat brewing and slow boat brewing like their old location not the new one it only has one bathroom and that place gets crowded and so eventually I had to go across the street and use the hutong bathroom and it wasn't a trough in the ground and it wasn't a bunch of stalls. It was actually just one small, completely open room, gendered, you know, female, male in different areas. So don't worry about that. I don't, I don't think I've specified that. I just assumed you guys knew that, which don't assume things, you know what I'm saying? So I walk into this bathroom and it basically looks like this. So it's a bunch of like squatting toilets that are all kind of close to each other. And you could be squatting in one and an old Chinese lady could be squatting in another and your butts could be touching. Like everything was that close to each other no stall walls or anything it's just like very efficient go in get your business done go out so that was a unique experience for me as well and I found over time that that style of toilet where it was just a room with no stalls and just squatting toilets on the ground I found that was actually more common than I had thought originally because I stayed in pretty uh, urban areas for the most part in China I was in Nanjing then Beijing Shanghai Twinjiao and then some little village areas outside there then I went to the Sanli Twen district of Beijing which is a big shopping area filled with like luxury shopping and I was desperate for a bathroom and I couldn't find any public toilets and I ended up wandering into this like random building that turned out to be some kind of hotel and it was like this really fancy hip hotel and the bathrooms were like almost unrecognizable because it was so over the top fancy and artsy. I almost didn't even know how to use it. The doors weren't even like normal stall doors. You like push this button and then it's like and it like opens. The toilet had a million buttons on it, like smart toilet. And basically what that is, is like the water can shoot out in all different directions into all different places, which kind of terrifies me. I'm a little afraid of bidets because I've never used one before. So I'm always afraid to push any buttons on there, but it did have a seat warmer already on, so which I don't really like. I just wanted to be cold. I just wanted it to feel like fresh and new, like I'm the only butt that sat on it. So yeah, sometimes it can range the total opposite end and get like so fancy you almost don't know how to behave yourself. So the moral of the story is bathrooms in China are plentiful and varied like crazy. There are endless variations of what your bathroom is gonna look like. I would say for the most 
part though, as a tourist going to China, so if you're not going to China to live there, you're just going to visit, you will come across a spotting toilet. So be prepared for that, but it will very likely be a bathroom with stall doors. And at all those tourist destinations that you're going to, like the Forbidden City and everything, most of those bathrooms have one Western style toilet. A lot of times, these ones, you don't have to open all the doors to know. They have a little placard on them that has like an image of like someone squatting or it looks like a Western toilet. So that's to kind of like help you pick whichever way you'd like to go about all of this. Also, really random side note that I forgot to mention, a lot of times it's expected that you're gonna throw the toilet paper in a trash can, not in the actual toilet itself. Don't worry about this too much. If you're seeing that there is a trash can in the stall and there's a lot of toilet paper already in it, just throw your toilet paper in the trash can. As an American, that felt so weird to me at first, but I actually got over it really quick. And then when I came back to America, I had to relearn to put the toilet paper in the toilet. I actually did throw it in the trash can once. Don't Sorry, mom. So yeah, now I hope you feel a lot more knowledgeable about Chinese bathrooms. If you have any questions for me, TMI or not, I'm more than happy to answer them. So comment those down below. And if there was a type of bathroom that I didn't talk about that you came across when you were in China, also let me know about that because I'm very curious. Since I've never been out to Western China and I really haven't explored outside of major cities too much really in China, I know there's probably a lot of other stuff out there and I'm very curious about it. Oh, I did forget to mention though, one time when I was in one of those little like villages outside Chuanjiao. I used a bathroom that didn't have a door on it, but it wasn't like a big deal because the whole thing was actually like outside and there were chickens running around. It had like a whole view of these like rolling green hills from the bathroom. And it was like the jankiest bathroom that like hardly worked. And like I said, there was like farm animals running around, but for some reason it's stuck in my brain and it's like one of my favorite bathrooms I've ever used. So you know, if there's some surprising hidden gems in China. I did recently make a video kind of on the same note, just trying to inform you guys and make you feel more comfortable so that your trip to China doesn't become a stressful thing for you. You just can be excited about it. Um, and that is everything you need to know about VPN. So I have that linked above as well. I go over everything. So like how illegal is it to use VPN in China? How does it work? How much does it cost? What does it look like when you're actually using it? Can you use it everywhere? So I answer all those questions uh, in that video. So go check that out as well. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hitting that little subscribe button means that you are part of the Fearless Fam, which is a group of, I like to call them fearful badasses. And we let our lives be guided by love rather than fear. That's what this channel is all about. So I hope you subscribe and stay tuned for tomorrow's video, which is another Travel Talk Tuesday. What's the topic this week? Honestly, the topic for tomorrow's Travel Talk Tuesday might be my favorite one we've done yet. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching today, guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. That didn't quite go according to plan. Bye.